Today we're heading to Standard to do some world spelling on a $60 budget. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Seth Live, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. And this week, we're heading to our new Postman Standard format to play some World Spell. This deck, oh my goodness, it is so incredibly sweet. So let's talk about our $61 World Spell deck, jump into some games, see it in action. So we're built around the World Spell, kind of a really slow version of Tooth and Nail 8, seven mana read ahead saga first two lore chapters let us dig seven cards deep to grab a non-saga permanent the last one lets us put two non-saga permanents onto the battlefield from our hand so idea of this deck is we're going to ramp aggressively into the world spell with topiary stomper joint expiration the wither seed treaty and then what we're hoping to do is find titan of industries whole break horse and then we got lots of different options world spell can dig for these cards or if we already have them in our hand we can world spell and dump two of them into play at once essentially like doubling our mana for the turn and if we can get down two titan of industries or whole break horse it's probably going to win us the game plus since we're doing all this ramping we can also just hard cast our titan of industries and Hallbreak horrors. Otherwise, Consuming Tide is our attempt to slow down aggro decks, just bouncing most everything, maybe drawing a card. Fading Hope, also good at slowing our opponent down. My other favorite card in this deck, Silver Scrutiny, so good with the ramp, but it's sometimes like a five mana draw three, but then in the late game, once we ramp a bunch, if we can stabilize, this is refill our hand. This is often draw seven, draw eight cards, which is absolutely ridiculous. Mana base, about as simple as can be. Uh, eight dual lands, some basic lands in the sideboard, a bunch more removal, counters for control decks, some protection, some graveyard hate, and that is the world spell for standard. That's our budget magic deck for this week. So let's jump into some games and see just how good the world spell might be. Can all of this rampy Simic stuff keep up with all the black decks in standard? Let's find out. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back in a bit for the wrap up. Today's video is brought to you by our awesome sponsor, Card kingdom you can get all the dominaria united cards you need and help support the show over at cardkingdom.com slash mtg goldfish budget magic time we are world treeing in standard this week and not the not the fastest start but we do have double ramp spells we have a whole break war now which if our opponent's playing control gonna be a good one well Thornwood Falls go. And Silver Scrutiny with the ramp is pretty nice. Good way to refill the hand. Opponent. Wedding announcement. Well, land and let's do some stomping. Grab a forest past the turn. Do they have the Rafine is a big question. Opponent. Land. I mean, this can't block. Okay, they do have the Rafine. Ugh. Okay, that's, that's not the best. Not the best. Opponent gets and hits us. Discards a Rafine. <laughs> Makes a token. Well, play the land. Stomper number two. The real question is going to be, uh, does our opponent have a counter next turn? I mean, we have successfully gotten to Titan of Industry mana. And we're going to turn on these Stompers with our next land drop. But opponent's probably going to have a pretty nice turn here. They get to attack with everything and triple connive? All right, they're gonna leave one back. All right, double connive. Well, we'll see what our opponent does. I mean, most likely, okay, wow. Discard the counter and a shield, right? All right, opponent's hand must be pretty good. Now to 15, gets to draw a card. And flip, well, play the land, go to combat. We're gonna attack. We would like our opponent to Wandering Emperor and eat a Stomper. Oh, just kidding, they have Vigilance. <laughs> it's a free attack. Down to 12. Well, I mean, I think we pass and just Hullbreak Horror here. So there's a Wandering Emperor. Hullbreak Horror can't get countered, which is big. If we actually get to untap with it, it's kind of insane. And if our opponent has to spend removal on it, hopefully that means we resolve the Titan of Industry. Opponent land, and we will see what removal they have. Gonna be close, gonna be close. Wow, just makes a Samurai okay. Oh, runs it out, okay. That's huge. That's exactly what we want to see here. Opponent goes to combat. Oh, this probably means we win. Opponent is not expecting this hull break horror. Opponent attacks. Opponent connives. Let it resolve. And then we hull break horror. We eat the token. We bounce our opponent's blockers. And oh, we're so close to attacking for lethal. Hull break horror. 
eat it. Down to 11. Oh, so we can cast two Wither Seed Treaties or one Titan of Industry. So Wither Seed bounce a uh, Wither Seed bounce the token. Hold it blocks Hullbreak Horror. Actually, I think what we do is Wither Seed Treaty. Bounce AO. Ooh, wait, can we trample for lethal? I think we can. Read ahead. Trample the Hallbreak Horror. Wither Seed Treaty. Bounce the token. Read ahead. Trample a Stomper. Everything at your face game? That should be game. Wither Seed Treaty. Ha! Reading ahead. Taking down Esper. Apparently we're the Esper Assassins. <laughs> Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Uh, okay, so. So, so, so. What do we want against Esper? So opponent's going to have a ton of counters. Counters are obnoxious. Uh, Hermit seems good. Hermit negate? What do we cut, though? Going up down one consuming tide. Maybe one fading hope. One treaty. Uh, and maybe one scrutiny. They are a shieldred deck, and shieldred is pretty good. Pretty good against... <laughs> against uh, drawing a ton of cards. And we got to see the power with seed. <laughs> Treaty. Hilariously, we're not trying to maximize that last mode. We only have two two basic land types, but even just plus two plus two and trample, when you have things like Hullbreak Core, is actually kind of scary. Maybe we're good against Desper somehow. We are on the draw. The world spell versus Esper. Burr. Seems to be a popular deck at the moment. All right, we'll keep this. I mean, we got no payoffs, but we got ramp. We got some defense. Well, and now we have a hole break horror. All right, not going to complain about that. I mean, hole break is probably our best, one of our best threats against a control deck. Opponent. All right, the Denix system online. Uh, Well, land go. So if our opponent plays Rafine, we probably just bounce the Rafine, I think. Uh, opponent gonna go to combat. If our opponent plays nothing, then we'll take two. Hey, Barabee. How are you, bub? Wow, opponent just passes? Okay. Well, uh, play the land and pass the turn. It's us for two. Uh, we're gonna kick a joint expiration. If our opponent wants to counter it, that's kind of fine. Uh, I don't think we want any lands here, honestly. We have so many in hand, both to the bottom. Another hull break horror. Okay, maybe keeping a land wouldn't have been the end of the world. Put a land into play. Bona passes. Got my coast. Yeah, if I'd known we were going to just go hull break horrors for days. If they wandering emperor, we are going to counter. Yeah, that's that's negatable. Well, now we're mostly looking for lands and ramp, honestly. <laughs> I kind If I knew we were going to draw into the hull break horror, I would have kept, uh, kept another one. Opponent wedding announcement. Goes to combat. Now yeah, let's bounce the Denik. Okay, we're going to keep that. Pwn only has one mana up at the moment. So we should be able to resolve it. One, two, one, two, three, four. I mean, they could have spell pierce, I guess. It seems kind of unlikely. All right. All right, all right, all right. Draw four. Double hull break or Titan of Industry. Got the Hermit too. Oh, we are in spectacular shape. And if we need to, we can refill our hand again. No world spell yet, but uh, opponent is in super big trouble here. Super big trouble. Plays a tap land. Replays the Denik. Opponent gets and hits us. Well, play the land. We don't want to get our stuff countered. We're just going to pass in Hullbreak Horror. I think is our, our best bet here. And if they stop that Hullbreak Horror, we can Hullbreak Horror plus Fading Hope next turn. Opponent, counting up. We're at the magical number. Seven. Seven is the magical number, mana-wise. That is a number where our opponent's life becomes very, very sketchy. Dare you attack. About it. Goes to combat attacks. I'll break horror. All right. Opponent has removal. Sure. So they get to get in and draw a card and hit us for a bit. Well, play the land, and we will pass the turn. We're just going to do the same exact thing, but this time we can also Fading Hope, which is a big, a big upgrade. All right, opponent, you have another answer. Tap land. Oh, runs out the wedding announcement. Okay. Hullbreak Horror, number two. Fading Hope. Bounce and bounce. 
Oh, all right. Well, we'll probably keep consuming. Actually, do we want consuming tide? Do we need consuming tide? All right, consuming tide to the bottom. Oh, and it hits us to seven. However, we get to untap, play a titan of industry. Gain five life, make a four, four. We wouldn't mind drawing another land so we can hull break horror plus spell. Opponent, shield rip. Passes. Drains us. Well, let's copyary stomper. Get a land. Permit. Pass the turn. Oh, all right, so next turn, hopefully this whole break horror can, uh, can do what we need to do about it. I mean, we have a good amount of blockers and I think we win the long game should we get to it. Opponent. All right, opponent's gonna pass and flip. Okay, so we draw, we get drained. Pass the turn. No attacks. We do need to deal with the shieldred. Wow, opponent cycles, okay. I mean, if we untap with the hull break horror, we should be fine. At some point, we're gonna need another Titan of Industry. Opponent plays a land. Another wedding announcement. Actually, we could hull break horror in the gate. Bounce shieldred. Yeah, let's do that. Hull break horror. Negate the wedding announcement. Bounce Shieldred. Oh, I mean, if they pass, they are in. Oh, goodness. Okay. No Shieldred at the moment. Let's Silver Scrutiny. Draw two. Bounce Denik. Joint Exploration with Kicker. Bounce a token. Draw the land, put it into play, go to combat, attack for a bunch, opponent. Gonna double block, sure. I mean, I think we're good, because we get to silver scrutiny again. Opponent goes to 19. We get to silver scrutiny to trigger Hullbreak Horror, to bounce the Shieldred. There's the Shieldred, sure. Wait and see if our opponent taps out first. Oh, this, oh, it's definitely over. Okay, Denik, sure. Oh, we found the solution to the Esper meta on, oh my goodness. Oh, game, super game. Silver Scrutiny, X1. Bounce Shieldred. Draw another Titan of Industry. Passes. All right, so Joint Expiration, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, with Kicker. Bounce Denik. You know what? Let's world spell. Oh, this is absurd. Uh, world spell. Bounce Tenacious Underdog. We will read ahead to chapter three. Put two Titans of Industry into play. And. <laughs> ah! Bonus scoops it up! A bonus scoops it up! <laughs> We found it. We found the budget deck that beats Esper, apparently. Well, that went amazingly. Why aren't more people doing this? Sweet, sweet. Budget magic time. We are ramping into the world spell in new no me hook standard this week. And I mean, this hand looks good. Triple ramp in silver scrutiny to refuel. Hopefully we're not up against a blue deck that can counter scrutiny. That would be sad. Aggro might might be an issue. I mean, whether it's a treaty, sneaky all-star. Kind of hoping we hit a non-Esper deck. We've played against Esper a lot this week. I think if it's Esper, I'm probably actually gonna scoop. We're already at mythic 85. Like how much worse can we make it? So yeah, if it's Esper again, you don't want to watch a video that's only Esper. And then, <laughs> And then when we when it was finally a different matchup, it was Orzov, which is kind of Esper, but without the blue. Well, Thornwood Falls, boom. Cheaty land, 21 winning, go. Oh, all right, all right, all right. It is not, it is not Esper. We will take it as a win. Well, uh, opponent plays a swamp in a blood tithe harvest. Uh, I mean, we will see, this will be interesting because I assume our opponent also has Titan of Industries. Can we go over the top? of our opponent's deck. We'll play the land with our seed treaty. Start at the beginning, get a forest. Ram spell number one. We kind of want to wait and play this when we have an extra land in hand, hopefully. 
Stone it. Land and graveyard trespasser. Well, we get a 1 1. Play a stomper. Grab a forest. Miss our land drop awkwardly past the turn. Ah, what do we do here? We don't really want to discard to Blood Tithe Harvest or to Graveyard Trespasser. Unleash the Inferno. Well, in that case, let's just let's just pick up the Stomper. Scry for a land. Fizzle the Inferno. Opponent goes attacking. Well, let's chomp. Really want to hit a land here so we can get to seven. Aha! There we go. Okay, so Topiary Stomper. Forest, Thornwood Falls. So Stomper is a real boy now. Actually gets to uh, do things. This also sets us up to just Titan of Industry next turn. Hopefully they don't have their saga. Although if they do, I guess we can draw a million. Blood Tithe Harvester, sure. And then Sacks to kill the Stomper. All right. Yeah, that works. That is allowed. Opponent goes to combat, gets in, hits us, sure. Yeah, I don't think we want a joint expiration without kicker. Bonnet hits us to 12. Fable of the Mia Breaker. Actually, what do we want to do here? We could Consuming Tide. Do we want to join? You know what? Let's actually joint expiration. We can't kick it, but we still get to dig. So if we Consuming Tide, opponent keeps what? Graveyard Trespasser? If we Titan of Industry, we probably get a blow up Fable and make a 4-4? Four, four? Consuming type bottom, land bottom. Let's put them both bottom, actually. All right, we draw land anyway. We untap. Ooh, hall break horror. Titan of Industry. 4-4, four, four. blow up Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Play a land past the turn. Oh, interesting. So opponent flout attack, so they want the, they want the treasure. I mean, this means we get to kill their board though, right? Their opponent's setting up a, to sweep the board? What is our opponent doing here? All right, burn down the house to sweep the board. That's, that's pretty fine. Because now we get to untap and draw infinite. Silver scrutiny for six. Put a land into play. Okay, I mean, we're in pretty good shape. Discard a Yavmaya Ghost. All right, so we got the Fading Hope if we need it. We got a World Spell, we got more card draw. Maybe this deck's just busted. Opponent needs something pretty good here. They need something pretty good. Honestly, we're at the point where if they Cruelty of Gex, I'm still, I'm not sure they win. They're gonna reanimate the Titan of Industry. But the bad news for our opponent is we have Fading Hope. Let it resolve. I'm sure they put the counter on the Titan of Industry. Then we just Fading Hope the Titan of Industry. Untap. An opponent. <laughs> wow, they were gonna scoop to one Titan of Industry. Little did they know <laughs> there were going to be two Titan of Industries. Do we want Return to Nature? Probably. Sniping the reanimation target seems helpful. All right, go down a couple Consuming Tides. Go down one Treaty. Disdainful Strokes in, Return to Nature in. What else can we cut? Oh, Silver Scrutiny is so good. This deck actually just feels really good. Like surprisingly good. Better than I would have expected good. It is hard to cut too many cards though. We want all of our goodies. You know what, let's go down one Hull Break Horror. I think that's fine. Seven finishers plus the world spell, probably good enough. I'm sure our opponent's bringing in discard, but Silver Scrutiny's just so insane. Not as insane against Yildred, but ugh, no ramp. No ramp's a little awkward, but. We do have World Spell. Return to Nature seems like it could be really good in this matchup. Opponent Riveteer's Outlook. Like sniping a Titan of Industry that our opponent's about to reanimate seems like it could be a, a game swinging line. Plus it can kill Fable, plus it can kill Cruelty. Well, Disdainful Stroke's not doing much yet, but eventually it will do things. Opponent Riveteer's Outlook. Uh-huh. Wouldn't mind a ramp spell. That's what we're missing. We're we're on the slow mode this game. Opponent passes. Oh, Topiary Stomper. Do we play it? Let's pass, actually. This would be the turn. It seems like they might be setting up for Wind Grace, and I would like to counter Wind Grace. All right, so stop the Wind Grace. Play the forest, Stomper. Grab an island. Okay, so we're up to five mana. I mean, if we have to, we can Fading Hope the Stomper. 
workshop, war chief. Uh huh. Gains a bit of life. Opponent passes. I'll play the land and pass the turn. Yeah, we might just fading hope the war chief. Although fading hope does get better after we get Hullbreak Horror down. Opponent goes to combat. Yeah, let's just bounce it. If they tap out, then we definitely world spell. Opponents realizing we're at seven mana if we have a land drop, which is where the bad things happen. All right, replays it, sure. Gains a life. Well, we will untap. Play a land, the world spell. Start at the beginning. Ouch. The worst world spell of all time. Hit a land. No attacks. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, that was a horrible world spell. And we put a bunch of card draw that we wanted to the bottom, which is also a bummer. Well, I mean, that is the risk of the world spell. It is whiffable. It is possible to whiff with it. A bonus goes to combat. No blocks. We'll take it. Down to 15. Let's see if they answer the world spell. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Sure. And a land. And world spell. Goes digging. We'll take a Hullbreak Horror. Play of Maya Coast. Get in with the Stomper. We should be okay here. Edge of her four. So now we can Hullbreak Horror and Fading Hope, which is kind of great. The opponent gets to do some looting. And next turn, we have our sneaky, sneaky Return to Nature tech. Opponent discards a couple of, wow, discards one of the removal spells. I guess I don't have anything to sack to it. Opponent realizing that we have Hullbreak Horror mana. Attacks makes a token. Yeah, let's just block and take it and see what our opponent does. The other thing we can do is just wait and put both Hullbreak Horrors into play and pretty much bounce everything. Blood Tithe Harvester, sure. Wow, they just scoop it up. Maybe World Spell is busted and no one knows it. <laughs> it's starting to look that way. Oh, sweet, sweet. Budget magic time. We are mulliganing. Playing some world spell. Ooh, all right, this is this is fine. We got to hit one land, but if we hit the one land, we get to ramp a ton. And I guess like worst case, we can bad preordain if we don't hit a land to, to kick joint exploration. Well, since we got two of them, we might bad preordain anyway. Opponent planes. Please not Esper. Pilfer A. Eh? Well, it looks like maybe straight ores up this time. Takes a stomper. Well, joint expiration. Can't kick it, sadly. But there are the lands. Keep them both. Play the land. Do a little stomping. Grab a forest pass the turn. Well, hopefully we just go over the top of our opponent's deck. We will, we will see. Scoured Barons, opponent, tenacious underdog. Ah, uh, Fading Hope's not the worst. I'll play the land past the turn. We haven't seen any signs of blue mana, so I think we're safe to cast this at instant speed. Yeah, we can't, we can't block you. Sure. Well, now we might Fading Hope this Stomper. All right, so Joint Expiration. With Kicker. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We'll keep them both. Put the land into play. Actually, do we even want to bounce the Stomper now? We have another Ram spell coming, but this is going to tick up. All right, we'll let it, we'll let it go. Well, we're going to get to seven mana. Thanks to the Wither Seed Treaty. Ideally, we will discard a Fading Hope to Liliana. All right, and then go from there. Uh, let's take an island. We got a lot of forests. All right, well, pass the turn. Do we get down the Titan of Industry? Does our opponent have more discard? Opponent takes up. Sure, sure, sure. We'll discard the Fading Hope. <clears throat> opponent discards a Swamp. Gets in, hits us. And pat. oh my goodness, World Spell. World Spell. This Liliana is an issue. Because if we World Spell, they're yeah. And sadly, we just have to play this Titan of Industry. The Titan of Industry, Rhino Shield Counter. And pass the turn. All right, opponent kills the Rhino. I mean, if they manage to kill the token, kill the Titan of Industry with the Liana, then at least we got the World Spell. Oh, okay, this is the worst. <clears throat> All right, that, that is the blowout. Opponent discards. I mean, this does let us kill the Liliana, but oh, losing the World Spell hurts. We need Silver Scrutiny. Oh. That also works. 
We, we will not complain about drawing another Titan of Industry. Uh, kill your Liliana. Titan of Industry number two. Opponent's probably a little salty. <laughs> Shield counter Rhino, and uh, here go, Tenacious Underdog. Witherseed Treaty has uh, has overperformed that pump mode. Has been shot, oh my god, uh, world spell. Let's just keep drawing seven drops. Uh, we'll start at the beginning. Oh, we'll find a land, okay, disappointing. Play the land. Get in with the Rhino, we're gonna play around Wandering Emperor. Opponent goes to 17. Cycles Rafine's Tower. Oh, maybe they're Esper. Or, eh, I don't know. They're probably Orzov playing a, a Cycling Land. Yeah, they would have blue mana by now, I think. So this is probably just a, a random Triumph for Cycling. Graveyard Trespassa. Well, let's hit uh, some good with this World Spell. The first one was a whiff. What we want more than anything is Silver Scrutiny. Silver Scrutiny, I think, just wins us the game. Oh, Hullbreak Horror is not bad. Uh, how about a Hullbreak Horror? Well, go to combat. This deck's so absurd. Blocks. Well, we'll kill the Trespasser. Opponent goes to 11. So we get to play a Hullbreak Horror and then put one into play for free? I actually don't even know if we want to play it for free. It might be better to cast it hilariously. I mean, you know we have Hullbreak Horror. That is an ambitious underdog attack. Opponent plays a land. Wandering Emperor. Okay, so that lets our opponent get rid of the Titan of Industry, which I guess keeps them sort of alive. Well, there's a Hullbreak Horror. <laughs> oh my god, put a Hullbreak Horror into play. Uh, draw six. <laughs> oh, that was like we were playing a, a different game than our opponent. <laughs> they were trying to do fair things, and uh, we were just casting seven drops. World spell's actually kind of sweet. Wow, we were blowing people out. What uh, what do we want? Liliana is annoying. That Liliana did almost get us. Thankfully, we had the Wither Sea Treaty to save the day. A gate, maybe? Fading hope. Negate. Could bring in the safekeeping. Go down one consuming tide. Go down one treaty. Actually, maybe two consuming tribes. So let's try it like that. Well, let's do that again. <laughs> Get to seven mana win game. Can you beat the world spell? So I expect our opponent's gonna have a lot of discard. You know what, we're gonna keep this. No blue mana is a little awkward, but we need any land to get to treaty to get our blue mana, and then we're kind of off to the races. Opponent pilfers. Well, let's see if they pilfer the treaty or if they take one of the good cards. I mean, they could hope to mana screw us by taking the treaty. All right, take, oh, takes joint expiration, okay. Well, we do need to draw land. If we don't draw land number three, we are kind of out of luck. The point, oh, all right. Well, we just need to draw a blue source then. Yeah, that's that's bad. That naming Wither Seed Treaty is bad. Oh God, okay. Oh no, this is the, this is the nightmare. Well, I mean, I guess we kept a kind of risky hand and we might be getting punished for it. Still, if we draw blue source, we can get out of all these issues. Opponent, Peacekeeper, hits us, 17. If they have Shieldred here, we're probably dead. Oh god, okay. Well, this is not going to work. Um, Wandering Emperor. Well, I guess we're about due for uh, for one of these games. Discard the Hullbreak or I guess. Yeah, I think we're just too far behind now. Like, even if we draw it, we're ramping, and we're taking six a turn. Makes a token, goes attacking. Blue mana or scoop? Oh God, and another threat. Well, blue mana or scoop is where we're at. I actually, blue mana and scoop, I think. Yeah, too late. Yeah, turn five, a bit too late to hit our third land. So this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. Yeah, this doesn't work, because we gotta pay the one. So we're taking, yeah, we're just actually dead here. All right, well, although with what we saw there, maybe we want one more consuming tide. Let's go down the negate. Go one negate. Pona seems to have a lot of creatures. So bring in one more consuming tide, which is good at like resetting a bunch of tokens. Could be, could be helpful. Well, we're on the play. Hopefully we hit our third land. Well, we're definitely hitting our third land. This hand's kind of sketchy for the other reason that we have kind of like seven lands in hand, but we do want to get to seven mana. That is the magical number. Hopefully that's fine. I mean, this is a good ramp hand as long as we find like a, a scrutiny or a seven drop, a world spell. Something along those lines. Well, Thornwood Falls, go. Opponent, planes, passes. Well, there's a world spell. 
Land go. Opponent planes. Ooh, passes. Well, this is working out. Land and Wither Seed Treaty. Start at the beginning. Grab an island. Pass the turn. All right, there's a black mana and a peacekeeper. So I can name World Spell, although I don't know if that actually saves them fully. They named Joint Expiration, but that kind of does nothing because we can just pay the two and still get to it. So I guess I got to name World Spell or something we haven't drawn yet. Joint Expiration's so good. All right, names a World Spell. Makes sense. We make a Sapperling. Yeah, we can untap land this turn. Pass the turn. So we get to ramp with joint expiration, and then I guess we're basically looking for a seven drop. Opponent goes to combat, opponent attacks. Yeah, we'll take three. So joint expiration, any of our seven drops, I guess outside of another world spell, which is a little slow here. All right, there's a trespasser. Well, kick a joint expiration. Do we want the consuming tide is the question. Probably not. Yeah, we'll just take the hull break order. But the Thornwood Falls into play. Draw land. Well, pump the token. Go attacking. Play the forest. All right, we could use one more, one more good draw. One more good draw. Tap land for our opponent. Opponent can definitely have an answer to the Hallbreak Horror. Well, okay. Run out the Hallbreak Horror. Do they have discard and an answer? Takes the world spell. Yeah, all right, Topiary Stomper. Yeah, I guess we just bounce Peacekeeper. Then the deck, get a land. I mean, we're looking for Silver Scrutiny. That's that's what we want. Do we attack with Hullbreak or is the question? Uh, probably. The problem with attacking is it means Wandering Emperor can kill it, but I don't think we can not take the damage. It's nice that Stomper can actually trade with this Glutton if we want it to. All right, Soul Transfer. Any big spell. Silver Scrutiny is probably the best because that gets us many big spells, but do we even trade? Probably not. I think we're like kind of winning the race at the moment. Oh, uh, they have the land. All right, so they get to Peacekeeper. Well, come on deck. Silver Scrutiny, Titan of Industry. They did name the correct card, although sadly, we still have the mana for it, or thankfully. Rhino and Shield Counter. Stomp ya. And opponent goes to seven and i mean we might as well play the land pass the turn that was a good draw all right more seven drops silver scrutiny we want the card draw we want the draw seven the draw eight <laughs> if we want is our opponent dead can they answer the titan of industry even if they can can they survive the stomper and the rhino all right another trespasser i mean that's good if they can kill the titan of industry tenacious underdog oh my god God, oh, our opponent's going to cry. Uh, well, do some attacking. That's such brutal running for our opponent. They even named it with the anointed peacekeeper they knew, but we ramp so hard it doesn't actually matter. Opponent blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks. So we're gonna kill graveyard trespassers and <clears throat> our opponent's going to die. Didn't even need the, the new Titan of Industry. <laughs> Wrecking fools, wrecking them. Well, uh, yeah, this deck's kind of sweet. Budget magic time. We are playing some Simic World Spell in No Meatball Standard. Ah, uh, sounds fine. We got a little ramp, Silver Scrutiny for refueling, and if our opponent goes too wild, we can uh, hopefully slow him down with Consuming Tide here. Uh, oh, Thornwood Falls. Go, yeah. opponent. And a bank buster. Well, there's the world spell. All right, so we know what we're working towards. Let's top Yari Stomper. Grab a forest. Well, we're probably gonna end up just drawing three, I assume. We'll see what we draw. Kaido, Mega Ninja. I'll play the land. Yeah, we're gonna do this now while your opponent's tapped out. All right, draw three. All right, all right, all right. Well, I mean, we're getting close. We got a Titan of Industry. We can turn on the Stomper next turn, which is kind of sweet to a joint exploration. And then, I mean, next stop World Spell, I guess. I feel like Silver Scrutiny has potential, or s Silver, I keep playing Sliver. Silver Scrutiny has potential to be pretty good. Can definitely draw a lot of cards. Opponent, gonna draw with Kaido. And tap land. 
Play the land, play the stomper. Which will turn on the other stomper and maybe let us kill the Kaido. Oh, all right, that's fine. So opponent make disappears. This is actually perfectly fine. Yup, you stopped our stomper. However, joint expiration kicker will keep another huge card draw spell. Put a land into play. Stomp the Kaido. Planeswalker down. And now the big stuff starts coming. We got the world spell. We got the Titan of Industry. Oh, hopefully we just go over the top of our opponent here. We do want to be aware of the counters. We already got countered once. Opponent passes. Well, go to combat. Uh, play the land. Go to combat. Hit you with the stomper. Opponent. Yeah, let's pass. I think we're gonna... <laughs> I don't want to run our our world spell into into a counter. So I think what we do here is we enjoy expiration in Silver Scrutiny to draw cards. All right, there's a the Wandering Emperor. Sure. So join expiration with Kicker. Yeah, I guess we'll keep a land. Put the land into play. Draw three. Ooh, Fading Hope, okay. That'll come in handy at some point. All right, we're, get, we're getting to the point where we can just make enough mana. We should be able to resolve stuff through our opponent's counters. Oh, can you imagine World Spell putting two Titan of Industries into play? How does anyone ever beat that? That's all we're trying to do. Like, we have the win in hand. We're just trying to play around the counters. Opponent, Wandering Emperor. And tap land, passes. Go to combat, attack the Wandering Emperor. Opponent gonna block and block. I mean, this is fine. This means our opponent has no creatures, which means we get to world spell. They have nothing to sacrifice for make disappear. So it should resolve. I mean, I guess they could have another kind of counter. The question is, do we try to get full value out of this or do we just like dump two Titans of industry into play and be like, can you beat it? Oh, opponent has Urtai, okay. So opponent, they're, they're staying alive. I mean, maybe they just have a million counters. Opponent, counter on Urtai. Goes to combat. Opponent passes. Well, land. World spell take two. Oh, okay. Are we just reading ahead? Probably. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Titan of Industry, Hullbreak Horror. Make a Rhino. Blow up the Bank Buster. Opponent draws a card. And we have the Fading Hope, so we can do stuff at instant speed. Your go, opponent. <laughs> All right, Resolute Reinforcements, sure. Opponent's getting those one ones out there. And what do you say, Esper? <laughs> Esper is like the, one of the best decks still. This might be us getting him with World's Spell. Yeah, your go. I mean, that put 20 plus power on the battlefield and upside with this Hullbreak or opponent land. Shield rid the apocalypse, okay. Okay, takes up on Urtai, passes. All right, we draw land, get drained. We'll play the land, Titan of Industry. Bounce Shieldred. Yeah, we got a lot of big things, opponent. There are many big things in our deck. <laughs> Make a Rhino, shield counter, hull break or smack you around a smidge. I mean, that's, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Blocks a Titan of Industry. Uh, okay, so we lose a Titan of Industry. We wrath our opponent's board. And opponent goes to four. I think just pass. So our opponent's probably gonna try to kill our Hullbreak Horror. And we're probably going to try to save it. Or our opponent's just done. World Spell. The World Spell. It was actually good. Okay, opponent. Esper tier stuff. What's good against Esper tier stuff? Disdainful stroke, maybe. Could bring in the hmm, bite down? Fading hope? The question is, what are we gonna cut? We actually really don't have, we really don't have much we wanna cut. I guess we can trim like a ramp spell, maybe? Maybe we stick with three fading hopes. How good is bite down? Yeah, all right, no bite down. Run it like that. 
Well, that went that went pretty well. Ramp, 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 world spell, GG pretty much. We didn't even go full value mode. We could have went digging through our deck hilariously, but we, we didn't need to. We just had all the big stuff in hand. So just like dump all of our stuff into play and have enough mana up that we can cast up with all breakout is kind of good. I feel like uh, world spell, as sweet as it is now, it'll probably be even sweeter once we uh, get Brothers War. It seems like there's going to be some big stuff in this set. Well, it, trying to figure out how to sideboard against our, our world spell. Where's the Saga Hate? Opponent needs their Saga Hate cards. Although Rita had really like, Enchantment Hate's not even very good against it, right? Opponent will probably be in counters. Maybe we should have, we'll see what they do. If they bring in a bunch of counters, we can bring in Hermit from the sideboard to have an answer to counters. But really the main plan is just try to go over the top our things be bigger than our opponents and opponent even had like they had the interaction they had multiple counters that game they had the shield red they had wandering emperor it's not like our opponent had some horrible draw like they played a lot of good stuff and it just wasn't as good as our stuff i guess that's the upside of having a deck that's full of seven drops <laughs> seven drops tend to be powerful magic cards so if you can cast them life is pretty good all right we'll keep one ramp spell got the world spell got a reset but a reset button hopefully well island go opponent tab land all right there's a whole break or a fiend well fading hope Pay the one. I think we're actually mostly looking for a land. Okay, Thornwood Falls counts. So play the land, joint exploration with Kicker. Consuming Tide bottom. Yeah, island top though. Yeah, it's fine. We already got one Consuming Tide. Put the Thornwood Falls into play. And... All right, Tenacious Underdog. So that makes me think our opponent probably has a counter. Yeah, play of the land, pass the turn. If our opponent's not playing Rafine, Palaza and Rafine. Well, let's bounce the Rafine. Pay the one. Ah, yeah, we'll, we'll keep some card draw. Get in with the Tenacious Underdog. Play the land and pass the turn. I wonder if our opponent will counter here. All right, Rafine returns. Gets to get in and connive. Sure. The question is, do we want our opponent to have the opportunity to counter? Opponent hits us. X3, Silver Scrutiny. Oh, opponent just lets it go. All right. Oh, well, there's all the lands. I guess that's good-ish. Well, let's World Spell. All right, so there's the counter. Oh, this is sketchy. This is sketchy. About it, lad, add. Yeah, this Rafine. I wonder where Rafine ranks in the best card of standard list. It's probably pretty far up there. Best creatures, at least. There's a Shieldred, opponent goes attacking. Yeah, this is a, this is a problem. Well, we're getting a look at our opponent's deck, at least. More shield reds, gains a bunch of life, hits us for a ton. We get drained. Play the land. Play top Yeri's number. Grab a land. Consuming tide. Think we're still dead here because of blitzing though. They have double underdog. So they can keep the shield red and then just blitz. And I think combined with shield red, okay. Yep, yep, yep. So that does it. So, well, now we know. Our opponent's all about the counters. So we will keep that in mind as we are constructing your sideboard plan. Probably means we want Malevolent Hermits. We'll go down one more treaty, I guess. What else can we cut? Maybe a Consuming Tide and try it like that. All right, so we got a bit more counter protection. It seems like our opponent's sideboard plan. Overload on uh, overload on counter spells. We saw Disdainful Soap and Make Disappear. So I think that trying to fight through the counters is probably the way to go here. I do think probably counters are our hardest matchup, I would say. I would think non-blue, non-blue decks, because it is definitely painful to tab out for something that's seven mana and have your opponent be able to answer it before it does anything for two mana. So I think that like Orzov and Monoide and Jund, I would guess that this is our, our worst matchup. This hand's so slow. We're going to mulligan. All right, I guess this is better-ish. We will keep. Put the hull breaker to the bottom for now. Land, go. Tap land. Well, land, go. 
So we can try to get a ramp on with joint expiration. Dress. All right, takes the card draw. Well, I guess that's fine, because we get to get down to Stomper, which is pretty good. Grab a land. All right, four mana, five mana. We're getting close. We're getting cl we're getting closer, at least. Found it. There's the blue mana. There's the Rafiq. And let's kick joint expiration, see what we find. Yeah, we probably want both of those, right? Let's draw the hull break first, because it doesn't get to rest, and then put the land into play, and then... Fading Hope Rafine. Pass the turn. Oh, and put the land into play. Pass the turn. So hopefully our opponent just replays Rafine. And then we can draw four. Oh, opponent passes. All right, well, we will also pass. We can X3 at instant speed, which is nice. So if our opponent like Wandering Emperors. Okay, so let's draw three. Okay, so we got a whole break horror. Still got to get it around the counters, but whole break horror can be close to unbeatable. We get to start attacking with Stomper next turn, which is nice. We'll see what our opponent does. All right, no Rafine just gets in and hits us. Sure. Makes a samurai. Well, there's the Titan of Industry. So, play the land. Go to combat. We're gonna take the Wandering Emperor. If our opponent trades both, I think I think we're okay with that. Uh, opponent blocks, blocks. All right, well, I mean, technically this means the, the Stomper got through most of a Wandering Emperor. Yeah, let's just pass. We wanna find a window to get down the Hall Break or, or the Titan of Industry. Either one is so good. Both would be even better. <laughs> I mean, opponents only got one blue mana, so we can probably like hull break horror. If it gets countered, Titan of Industry, like our opponent shouldn't be able to deal with all of that. And if they decide to get greedy and like cast Rafine, then we probably get both. They might have some removal that can kill hull break. Opponent's really tanky on this. All right, takes up the Wandering Emperor. All right, well, hull break horror. That one's not getting countered. Is it dying? That's the real question. Okay, Urtai. So this works. This basically works the same. So opponent kills the Hullbreak Horror. We get to draw a card. They tapped out their blue mana. Now we get to Titan of Industry. All right, well, Titan of Industry. Make a 4-4. Four, four, and shield counter the Titan of Industry. And Thornwood Falls, go. We are getting low on cards. And we're down two, two silver scrutinies, which is awkward. Opponent land runs out the Rafine. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! That is a good one. Uh, we'll go to combat. Attack our opponent. Attack our opponent. Is this too greedy? You know what? It probably is. Let's leave back the Titan of Industry. Attack our opponent. Now the challenge is resolving this. This is where you can see how blue matchups are tricky. Like, if this was a non-blue matchup, this just, like, draw seven probably wins us the game. But now we got to play the sub game of can we find a way to resolve scrutiny through our opponent's counters? Which I think means we're probably just going to not cast it this turn, run out of Stomper, get another land, play the land, pass the turn. I mean, if our opponent taps down, there's a window where we could cast it to draw three, which is still pretty good. Not as good as just refill your hand, which is the dream, but we might not be able to live the dream again in, against Esper. That might be something that we do in, in other matchups. Found it, counter on Urtai. So Urtai gets first strike. Tenacious Underdog, uh-huh, passes. Go to combat, attack our opponent, attack our opponent, and I guess at this point attack, our yeah, we'll get in with everything. I mean, a little worried about our opponent having another Wandering Emperor, but if they do, that does clear the way for the scrutiny to just draw infinite. Opponent blocks. And then they try to Wandering Emperor away our, our Titan of Industry, I guess. Uh, opponent, okay, new plan. <laughs> opponent blocks and blocks another new plan blocks and blocks oh. <laughs> all right wait wait switch it up all right so we'll kill the rafine opponent goes to seven play treaty 
Keep thin in the deck. I don't know why that gets a nice. It's not even all that good, but sure. All right, grab a forest. Pass the turn. So the Wandering Emperor does get to deal with the Titan of Industry. It does get rid of it, but it does deal with it, yeah. Oh, if we could resolve this card draw, life would be so much better. The problem is we don't really have anything that's like super good at baiting, like stuff like the Wither Sea Treaty, our opponent just doesn't care about or care enough about to feel like they have to counter it. So our opponent just can leave up their counters all the time. And we've seen Disdainful Stroke. Wow, opponent's getting in, sure. It's us down to 15. Well, I guess the race is on. Another Wandering Emperor. My people. Oh, that's not good, that's not good. Opponent plays the tap land. Well, scrutiny for three. Daily blue decks. This pressures our opponent because they don't know the last card in our hand. So if they counter this, they got to be thinking, oh no, I could get Titan of Industry. I could get whatever. Put it in the tank. So I got the counter. Are they countering it? Is this a bait spell? That's what our opponent started to figure out. And it's not, but. Okay, make disappear. Sacks the dorks. Oh, decline. Oh, okay. Make a sapperling. Play the world spell. Start at the beginning. Take a titan of industry. Pass the turn. Whoa, yeah, opponent's playing really slow. Okay. Opponent's on the timeout pace. There's a Rafik. Opponent gets in and connives. The question's gonna be, do we... Ugh. The question's gonna be, do we cast the Titan of Industry? Or do we try to be patient? Pona gets in, they connive, they loot. Discards and negate. They must have just drawn that. Well, we're gonna block. Uh, so opponent does have all the all the counters, that's for sure. Alright, well we get to dig with World Spell. See what we find. New joint expiration, okay. Well, go digging. Titan of Industry. Play the land, play a Titan of Industry. It resolves. Make a 4-4. Four, four. Shield counter. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Can we close this out? Is the world spell gonna get us there? Kaido Shizuki gonna do some card drawing for our opponent, but they still have to not die to the Titan of Industry. X2, we get to put this one into play for free. And maybe we hit something, oh, do we join expiration? How many, what do we have left that we can hit? We got a bunch of hull break horrors. All right, makes a ninja. We have scrutiny left, right? One, two, three. I mean, we got more world spells. We got hole break horrors. <sighs> what a grindy game. Samurai. All right, opponent's starting to get worried about dying by the looks. I'm going to pass. Well, okay, join ex phases out Kaido. Well, join expiration with, might as well kick it. I think we want both of these. So, okay. Yeah, we want both of these. So draw the fading hope. Untap, draw a world spell, put a Titan of Industry into play, make a 4-4, four, four, and put a shield counter on it. World spell, keep the fun going, start at the beginning. Hole breaker horror, attack our opponent. Okay, I think we're gonna get there. This has been a long and grindy game, but I think the world spell is beating the best deck in standard. I think that's where this ends up. It's actually been really good. The card advantage is kind of huge. And now we get to hole break horror and fading hope to double bounce. I'm just gonna remove the counter. Okay, on a blocks. The shield counter is actually kind of nice here because it means our opponent can't just like block with everything and trade. All right, opponent down to six. Pass the turn. Are we beating the best deck in standard with a world spell about it? Okay, first strike, sure. I don't think we want a fading hope here. It just gets so much better with Hull Break Horror. About it, getting frisky, sure. The knives. And Hull Break's uncounterable, so they can't stop it. Here's the land, we'll take the one. I mean, barring a disaster, we should be able to win this turn. Opponent draws. And are we done? Did we world spell him? All right, another Wandering Emperor. I mean, that's probably as much as our opponent could hope for. A Wandering Emperor can snag one of the Titans of Industry. Yeah, opponents fighting the good fight. Titan down. 
Opponent to eight. Bank buster, that doesn't matter. I mean, I think we got it. So we untap. Oh, we draw the hermit too. Go dig it. Take a uh, hole break horror. Play hole break horror. And we got the GG's. We got the GG's. Play the hermit. Bounce for a fiend. And a bonus scoops it up. And we took down the best deck in standard with a world spell. Maybe it's good actually. That was super sweet. That was the longest game ever, but that was very, very impressive. That's a tough matchup. Opponents got all the counters. They got all the ways to exile or stuff. Even with shield counters, they got Rafines, all the best cards in standard. And we still got there. Budget world spell. Mm, sweet, sweet. Budget magic time. We are world spelling in standard and also mulliganing in standard. Ooh, this hand's sweet though. I think we, uh, we might regret this. So we're on the draw. If our opponent's a, uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna be greedy. How are we gonna be greedy? Do we need this consuming? You know what? Let's put, uh, you know, the right thing to do is probably put world spell to the bottom, honestly. All right, let's do it that way. I was thinking about putting this consuming tide to the bottom, but if our opponent's some sort of, they're on the play, if they have some sort of aggro draw, we might need the, the pseudo reset just to stay alive. So ideally, world spell goes to the bottom, which is a bit sad, but we can ramp, we can draw cards, hopefully not die, and our deck is overflowing with big things. So if we actually make it to seven mana, then we should be, we should be good. I'm waiting for us to have to play an aggro deck. We haven't really had to play an aggro deck yet. We've played a lot of, still a lot of black decks, although we have crushed all of them. Opponent. Jund. All right, well. All right, I guess we're we're junding. Not as much diversity matchup wise as, uh, as I'd like, but I guess that's just standard. It is interesting. The black decks, I think, are worse. I think the black decks are worse now that there's no Meat Hook Massacre, but they're still pretty good. It's not like the, the black decks are bad now. They are still the most heavily played. Opponent, a fan of pigs, apparently. Forest and Fable of the Mia Brega. All right, sure. Opponent passes. Well, Forest and... I mean, I guess we just do a bit of stomping. Grab a Forest Pass the turn. Well, we'll see. Our opponent could get a fast Titan of Industry, and that would be bad. This Goblin Shaman is free to make treasures. We can't actually stop it. Well, next goal, stabilize. Wow, only he discards one, and it's not a reanimation target. Next goal is stabilize enough that we can draw a ton with Silver Scrutiny. I mean, I guess drawing three wouldn't be bad. Opponent gets in, treasure. Hits us. Down to 19, and... All right, solo, oh, I see. So they're, they're getting their ramp on with the solo win grace. Actually, this works, right? So we play this. Yes, works. Play this. Kick a joint expiration. Bottom. Do we want to keep a land? I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. We're shuffling anyway. Probably not. Let's just draw a random card. Two to the bottom. Consuming tide. Put the land into play. This lets us play another stomper which gets us to seven lands, lets us start attacking. Okay, that was pretty good. But Mono wants to trade with Ring Grace, so that's kind of fine. And it's four, three mana to make it indestructible. That is most of our opponent's turn. Mono gets to flip the Saga, and we can mass bounce if we need to, we'll see. See what our opponent does here. Opponent kills a Stomper, gets in, gets in. Well, I think we just kill the token. Kill the token, take our beats. Because they could discard a land to make it indestructible. And opponent, more Fable of the Mirror Breakers. I kind of just want to draw six. Do we die if we do that? If they can reanimate a Titan of Industry. Hmm. All right, let's go to combat attack. Not much downside in the attack. Maybe we just draw five? Yeah, let's draw five. And this leaves us live to drawing Fading Hope? Okay, no Fading Hope. Well, all right, let's see. If our opponent can discard Titan of Industry, reanimate Titan of Industry, copy it with the Reflection, we're in trouble. Otherwise, if we untap relatively unscathed, all right, no Titan of Industry. Liliana. I mean, this is gonna hurt, but it's not, it's not lethal. Takes down, we lose our Stomper. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, copies it, treasures. So we get smacked. We have five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Oh, 
Uh, so we can bounce everything minus one thing, but does that keep us alive? How can we stay alive here? The other option is whole break horror joint expiration. So consuming tide leaves us dead. All right, so play the land. Play the land past the turn. In Hullbreak Horror, we trust. We might be dead here. We might. It's going to be super close. If we survive this turn, I think we got the win. But I don't know if we can survive this turn. Possibly stabilizing too late. Opponent going to take up. Sure. We'll discard a Consuming Tide. Wow, discards the cruelty of Gex. The question's gonna be, does our opponent have removal? If they have removal for the whole break horror, it's gonna make us die. Oh, this is the best the best possible solution. Uh, sure. Plays a tox roll. That's fine. Goes to con I don't think they're gonna expect this whole break horror. Big attack. Well, we whole break horror. Opponent gets a treasure. Block the soul of wind grace. Kill it. Join expiration, no kicker. Bounce the tox roll. I think we just win. We'll keep the world spell, but I'm pretty sure we win here. Because we can double pump with Wither Seed Treaty, so we go to one. Opponent it passes. So we just play a land, Wither Seed Treaty. Uh, bounce your reflection. Read ahead. Pump. Treaty. Bounce your treasure. Read ahead. Got him. <laughs> wow. That was especially impressive because our opponent had a legit draw that game. Like that was, that was a super legit draw. And, <laughs> and it didn't end up actually, actually being enough for our opponent. Yeah, maybe this deck is actually just like super good. Uh, is Consuming Tide worth it? Consuming Tide, I will say, I feel like it's a necessary evil against aggro because I don't know how we beat an aggro deck without it, but against these mid-range decks, it's not that great. Like we had multiples in hand that game. We chose not to cast them. So I assume our opponent's gonna bring in a bunch of discard most likely. Hands powerful, but no ramp. Ah, oh, risky, risky, risky. The all seven drop hand. <laughs> well, I guess silver scrutiny we can cast for less. Yeah, we're gonna keep it. It's it's fine. Worst case, we hopefully are gonna be casting us like X two to try to find some ramp. Going to six. And riveteers outlook. Well, hopefully we draw cheap stuff. Any of our ramp spells would be nice. Lands, I guess, are fine. Not as good as ramp, but still fine. We'll see how aggro our opponent is. If they get an aggro draw, we could have a rough go of it. Like literally go, take your turn, hogs. I think that's what, what that name means, opponent. Tenacious underdog. All right, well, joint expiration is, it's ramp, it's ramp. You're gonna take an extra turn, but now well, let's see if we can stabilize the age old question. If we get to seven mana before we're dead, opponent haunted ridge, oh, fable the mirror breaker, all right. Oh, okay, this is a fast start. This is a fast start. Opponent gets and hits us down to 18. Play the land past the turn. Ooh, now I'm kind of regretting taking out those consuming tides. They would actually have been good here. Well, let's see what our opponent's follow up is. If they play a, a wind grace or something, I think they're going to be fast enough here. Wow, doesn't discard anything. Okay, so they must have something good. Opponent combat hits us. Treasure. Well, kick a joint expiration. Uh, world spell bottom. We'll keep the land. Put a land into play. Oh, I don't know if we're gonna be fast enough or not. Could use a fading hope, but fading hope to just bounce something for a turn. That might buy us enough time. Or maybe another ramp spell. If we can double ramp this turn and get to Titan of Industry the next turn, that could also be fast enough. What is our opponent's hand? It's gotta be like Cruelty of Gigs. We draw a land. Ugh. All right, well, land go. Oh, this is gonna be so close. Opponent untaps, flips the saga. All right, we have a couple uh, of potential pathway forward. Cruelty of Gix. See what our opponent chooses. We're gonna start on mode one, take our Titan of Industry. That might do it, we'll see. So we are going to join expiration with Kicker. Topiary Stomper bottom, Titan of Industry top. Put a land into play. Silver Scrutiny X1. Oh, okay, do we draw land? It's us uh, down to eight. 
We need a land, and we need it now. Okay, that is a land, so play the land. Titan of Industry. Blow up Cruelty, make a 4-4. Four, four. This is still super sketchy. What do you got, opponent? What do you got? Riveteer's Charm gets rid of the Titan. Got another removal spell? That would do it. All right, yeah. Oh, wait, three, four, that doesn't do it. So we go to one. Wither Seed Treaty. Oh, yeah. All right, no kicker. Two lands to the bottom. Yeah, I think that does it now. We can gain a life. Ugh, yeah. Wow, that was close, okay. Okay, okay, Pony had the aggro start and got, oh, we just almost stabilized. Maybe we bring back in one consuming tide. Bring back in one consuming tide. We also had a pretty slow start. Oh, what can we cut though? That's the, that's the challenge. You know what, go down one world spell. Let's try it like that. Two consuming tides. All right, we're on the play. That was a little bit of a slow start. We didn't get to our stuff as quickly as we wanted. We kept the no ramp hand in. Our opponent was on the play, which might have, that might have just been a punt, honestly. Well, we'll see. We're on the play this game. Our hand is, I guess, sweet. Only one ramp spell, but double Titan of Industry. Well, tap land go. About it. Also tap land. Opponent. How about a slow start? Let's not go too aggro, opponent. All right, tenacious underdog, going a bit aggro. Opponent pass. Oh, there's a consuming tide though. Uh, all right, play the land. Pass the turn. So we can joint expiration with kicker. Let's see if they also have the. They do. Well, all right, joint expiration, kick it. Bottom, bottom, looking for lands. Okay, that's not a land. I'll put a forest into play. Opponent. Hits us. Down to 18. Not a land. Well, I mean, I guess we consuming tide. Although it's not great here. But it should draw us a card. I mean, we need to hit our lands. We need we have seven drops for days. Like if we get to our seven drops, oh my god. Double Titan of Industry and Hullbreak Horror. So we just need to hit the mana. Oh no. Oh no. Too much power, not enough mana. All right, well, uh, yeah. I mean, our opponent knows if we get to seven mana, their life is gonna be very sad. They also know that we are not especially close to getting to seven mana and may never get there. Bonnet, Fable, the Mirror Breaker. Yeah, Consuming Tide, so medium. Gets in, hits us. Lander Ramp, Fading Hope, so that's neither. Oh yeah, we're we're in trouble. Opponent's out ramping us with these fables now. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Well, I mean, we found how we can lose, which is our deck has a lot of expensive cards and uh, we scribed pretty aggressively to the bottom and we were just not hitting our lands. Our opponent is outlanding us. Uh, despite our best efforts and our ramp and our preordains. Sometimes you just got four lands in the top 15 cards. Burn down the house. Well, we're gonna bounce a token and scry. Okay, we'll, we'll keep the treaty. The treaty's not a land, but it can find us a land. Opponent makes a bunch of devils. Makes a treasure. Yeah, I mean, we don't really have a choice at this point. Get rid of the fable. Drop to it. Yeah, it's gonna be too slow. Run out your tenacious underdog. No, oh, it doesn't even bother. All right, well, Wither Sea Treaty gets a land. Grab a, doesn't really matter, a forest past the turn. Still just five mana though. Two ram spells and we still have less mana than our opponent does. Well, this is definitely the awkward running where we've drawn a ton of our seven drops. Uh, we've drawn honestly more seven drops than lands. If you discount the ones that we've ramped into play or as many seven drops as lands, which is not a recipe for winning. You got it, opponent. You don't gotta think hard. You got it. All you gotta do is attack with your creatures. We cannot, cannot get to the seven drops in time. I mean, they probably should just blitz the underdog. I don't think there's any two, five, yeah, six, seven, eight. Yep, yep. Yeah, that does it. There's no way we can get to seven mana before we're dead. I guess we can't go completely undefeated. Oh, the stack's still bonkers. Like, finally we ran badly and we just barely lost. Otherwise, we just crush everyone. Yeah, all right, sweet, sweet. 
So what do we learn this week about the world spell in standard? And overall, the deck actually just kind of crushed it. We ended up going four and one. We did play a bunch of black decks. Uh, standard's still very black heavy. Esper a couple times, Jund a couple times, Orzhov once. So that was kind of still the meta. The good news is this deck feels like it kind of just crushes the black decks. The hardest one is probably Esper because they have counters that can maybe stop our big spells, but we have answers to their counters in our sideboard. But really, we went four and one against those decks and our one loss came to Jun, which we had already beat once and then in the rematch we just kind of ran clunky and that is going to happen on occasion even with all of our ram spells even with all of our lands even with all of our card draw there's still going to be games where we just like draw a bunch of seven drops and don't draw our ram spells kind of draw the wrong half of our deck as we saw that doesn't happen often that's not something to be super concerned about but every once in a while you're gonna have that game where you're like stuck on two lands stuck on three lands or just you know draw four titan of industries and you're like eh, okay like i guess we lose this one so the one loss we did have it didn't really feel like we lost to our opponent as much as we just lost to our deck running awkwardly but the rest of the games we just kind of crush people like our spells are so big and so impactful in this deck i think it might actually be like kind of a sleeper deck in standard i'm kind of surprised that more people are not ramping into these big spells because it seems like it just goes super over the top of all these black decks people are trying to play we just kind of laugh in the face of all the tenacious underdogs and graveyard trespassers we're casting titan of industry in a whole break horrors. as far as a world spell it was also really good we had a couple times where it kind of whiffed with its first couple lore counters we're gonna land or something which is a little disappointing but we also just saw the dream of like play world spell put two titan of industries into play win the game or like play world spell use it to put whole break horror into play and then we get to untap with a handful of cards and all of our mana so we can just cast a bunch of spells and bounce all of our opponent's stuff with whole break horror, use it to protect the whole break horror. so all around the deck feels absolutely awesome and really outside of the mana base i don't know if i change a whole lot like if you want to play a non-budget version of this deck consuming tide's probably the weakest card i don't know if there's a better plan for aggro maybe there's something else that we could play there maybe it's some life gain i uh, workshop war chief something like that but really outside of like updating the mana base playing some channel lands you can play some more uh, rare dual lands there's really not a ton to do i don't think to make this into uh, you know a non-budget version of the deck so all around the world spell and the deck felt pretty amazing so that's been our budget magic for this week world spell for standard thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed it and i will talk to you soon looking for more standard fun well make sure to check out the saga storm deck we played for much of brew a little while ago that deck is ridiculous